You're listening to the Becoming Zesty podcast. We are Megan and Dr. Alex, and we're so happy that you're here. We are passionate about accelerated transformation, yours, ours, and the collective. Personal and professional for coaches, practitioners, and leaders of all kinds. Between the two of us, we seem to have done things the painful way. So let our pitfalls become your stepping stones. We are not afraid to share our raw and vulnerable truths in order to help you transform your thinking, your body, your heart, and your soul. Combining over 15 years of functional medicine with brain-based habit change to lead you to create the life of your dreams, supporting yourself through all four bodies, physical, mental, emotional, and energetic every step of the way. We are transformation accelerators, wholeness cultivators, empowerment experts, speakers, authors, mentors, and change makers for a more loving world. By combining Dr. Alex's MD experiences with Megan's mindset magic, we've helped hundreds of thousands of people transform their lives, and we can help you too. If you're ready to accelerate your transformation and have so much fun doing it, then stick around. We've got you covered. Quick reminder, this information is not meant to diagnose, manage, or treat disease. Always consult with your doctor, not this doctor, before making changes. Now let's get into today's episode. Hello, hello, Alex here with you. Welcome to the Becoming Zesty podcast. We are so glad that you are here. Today we're going to talk about some self-sabotage and that is in part a lead up to our self-sabotaging masterclass, why working on it is a trap and is actually making it worse. So to get signed up, this is a free class. We are going to be talking to you about self-sabotage, why it tends to be a trap for people, and what you can do about it instead. And you can check that out in the show notes. It's becomingzesty.com slash sabotage. The word, no, no, nothing special about it. All right, so self-sabotage can be a really scary concept. And that is what I wanted to share with you today is that really my own experience with it. And the reason we want to talk about it is because we've both had and seen other people have now over, you know, over a decade working with humans, just how much people are impacted by self-sabotage and just how crummy of an experience it can be. And we believe the misunderstandings that happen and surround the topic of self-sabotage do honestly make it so much worse and people get into an even more disempowered state by trying to do something to help themselves. And on that, we do hate that, right? We're all for doing the work. We're all for self-development. We do believe in not getting out of the uncomfortable stuff of growth and evolution. And at the same time, there never is an appropriate time to use something to make your life worse instead of making it better, especially when you're intending to make it better. So this whole self-sabotage thing has really got got to be unpacked in our opinion. So my experience with self-sabotage started out, it was in health and business is how it first came up. But I feel like maybe 15 years ago plus, it just became a really notable thing that people were discussing. And, and it began to be talked about in a variety of contexts in life. And To be honest, I had a lot of fear around it. The idea that there were aspects of me, like parts of my system, my brain, my body, myself, that were really, sounded like they were out to get me. Like something that I didn't know was within me could come out at any time and make me, I'm doing air quotes here, be out of character or out of line with what I say my goals really are. And that concept was terrifying as I'm, I feel like it should be. I mean, like that is the, it's like the boogeyman. I mean, if they can come out of the shadows at any time, like that self-sabotaging part of us, and it's like just the, 
the scary thing that is unpredictable and unknown and we don't know what to do with it once it happens because so often it was talked about at least the way I heard it from this lens of like you're going along trying to do something good and here you are then realizing you've been doing something else and then it's already too late and the self-sabotage is really kind of like in the rear rear view mirror and you can't do much about it like oh i self-sabotaged that relationship oh i self-sabotaged that business opportunity oh i self-sabotaged me going back to school or whatever it is and that's how it was and it was like well if if you only realize that at the end, if you already messed it up, that to me was just so full of fear because I, what am I supposed to do with that? That's really what my reaction was. I was like, I have nothing to take action on in this. And so it really sucks to consider that that may be part of it. So I will say the first couple of years were, were really more um, on that front of I'd hear about the concept and it would bring up this instantaneous reaction of like, oh my gosh, I need to get that thing away from me. And I really, really hope that whatever is in me that I don't know about just I hope it stays put under that rug and I hope I don't have to look at it and I, you know, hope to not have that experience. And over time, I began to be like, wait a second, you know, I do find myself feeling like I'm self-sabotaging. So what is the deal here? Like I, I began to see enough validity in it that I began to look at it through that lens and really when I started looking at it a couple of years later then of okay what is this thing is that once I started doing the digging and it was more just like talk therapy and uh, journaling and, and I was using things like that was that I began to increase my awareness of the problem of to say, huh, there are parts of me that disagree with myself. I'm like, there so much of me believes in my success in helping the world and making an impact and doing big things. And then there were the corollary parts that were like the ones that didn't think so. And the ones that were like, maybe it's better if we don't put ourselves out there like that, like it's not very safe. And And that's where I began to see, like having looked at it, the awareness was, oh my gosh, there are multiple contradictory aspects of me. And that is where the issues arise. But back then, what my brain ran with it in is that even though I began to have more of an awareness that it happened, I still didn't know what to do about it or if anything could be done about it. And what I began to see was that a lot of times those doubts, those fears, those kind of the contradictory aspects and the thoughts that I was hearing in my own head I was like, I didn't even necessarily intend to pick that up from the world. It was just, these are the beliefs and the doubts and the insecurities that I picked up from living life and especially anything I learned when I was young. And with that combination of awareness, but then also the awareness of I didn't necessarily intentionally choose all of these things that I'm noticing, what happened was that in, instead of fear, I moved clear on over to just being straight pissed. Like I was just angry. I was like, I didn't, I didn't program half these doubts in my head. Like I feel like I heard this before I even consciously chose what I think about myself. I all these like things that I picked up from the environment and now it's within me and I don't know what to do about it. And that's where. I I really was angry about it. It was like, I wish I hadn't even started to look at it kind of because now not only was it something I couldn't try to avoid or ignore or pretend like didn't exist, but I had already acknowledged it so that the cat was out of the bag. It was too late to stuff the cat back in, but I couldn't resolve it. It was just like, oh, I see. So half the time I'm saying, oh, I care about 
making this thing because I value my family and, and what I, you know, the legacy I want to leave. And then the other part of me would have all these crappy doubts and fears. And then that part would win and I'd do nothing. And I'm like, I'm, I'm saying I'm this kind of person, but obviously if I don't put my money where my mouth is, I'm not that kind of person. And really I took that self-awareness down and down and down into feeling worse and worse about myself instead of actually using it for any sort of service to my own life. And so that really was a huge problem until I then got to the part of my medical training and med school and residency and all of that where I really began to have a more of a mastery on how the brain works, right? And how the central nervous system is set up, how it operates, how it wires itself, how it reinforces itself, what its main goals are, you know, all the stuff we talk about here on Becoming Zesty and the podcast. And what I started to realize was that all of those experiences that I had in childhood and the experiences I was having as an adult where I could hear myself talk and argue with myself and, and feel like I could be, have the experience and be the one beating myself up and being the punching bag and being mad that I'm beating myself up. Like to be all those moving pieces, they actually were just represented in the brain very literally. Like when people speak, when, when we all share, when we all share our inner dialogue and the sensations and the, the feelings that we have, we essentially just say our brain wiring to people. And so in that, I began to see, oh my gosh, this is just the exact same self-sabotage is just instructions that were pre-wired into part of the central nervous system. So are all the other things. And I had the aha finally of, oh my gosh, there is no such thing as self-sabotage. There's just neurons that have wired together as they've learned to habitually think of those concepts. And so there can be just two different settings that have been programmed. And oh my gosh, what do you know? That can be changed. And, and after that, I was, I remember being like, oh my God, this boogeyman that I've been so terrified of and then so ramped up and pissed at was just like the shadow of the dresser. That's all it was. It was like, I realized that I had built up just the concept itself had created a whole new problem for me as opposed to being a solution. So that is an interesting thing. And so that's why we are, we don't talk about creating a masterclass for resolving self-sabotage, right? It's like, it's a, that self-sabotage in and of itself, buying into that thinking is a trap and working within that trap, you'll then create and resolve your own problems, create your own problems, resolve your own problems, create your own problems, resolve your own problems. We don't need to spend time doing that because then we're oftentimes losing time on getting the results that we want in life. So of course, most people don't want to waste time or waste their own time or their own energy. And so here, you know, when this fear of self-sabotage and our belief in the concept of self-sabotage gets real high, it's time to get new information. And especially it's time to take that information and match appropriate resources for yourself, the tools that you need to move through it, to support yourself, to process the emotions you have around the things that you think and feel and have experienced to allow yourself to both be the have the experience that you have and parent yourself in a loving kind way all of these things really have more to do with creating solutions and support structures that allow ourselves to move through life in a way that feels really good to us that really is actually more of the rub so if you have been looped into the self-sabotage, like working on it trap, or even anything like the low confidence, let me work on my confidence, then I'll go help people. Oh my gosh, that's also a trap. Please come to the masterclass. We will help you out. We'll explain exactly how that works. We'll show you how it's set up in the brain. Literally, you know, I, that was the main takeaway, but we'll show you exactly how that happens from like the 
the medical side of neurons and how they work and chemical messengers and all that. And of course, you know, we'll do some ner nerdiness, of course, it wouldn't be zesty without some nerdiness. But then we move to really at the end of the day, it's about application. What are you going to do about that for working with you and you to accomplish your goal? We don't need to spend years working on ourselves just to work on ourselves right we can work on ourselves as we become the people we're gonna we're most proud of day in and day out as we move quickly powerfully in a fun way towards the life of our dreams right it's not a sequential endeavor if we keep it sequential we won't get there instead it's time to come work with you and you and make sure that we're working on the correct things the right things the things that will move the needle for us and create a big ripple effect of positive impact out in the world. And of course, we all need that. We all want that. We all desire that. Let's go be the leaders that the world needs instead of waiting for somebody else to do it. That's it for today's podcast. Check out the show notes and get signed up for the masterclass and we will see you there. Thanks for coming to hang out with us on the podcast. It is our goal to lead others through accelerated transformation that takes all parts of ourselves into account. And we need your help. We need your help to get the word out. At almost 2 million downloads and quickly heading to three, we know that as this podcast grows, we're going to be able to reach more and more people and help them learn how all four bodies, physical, mental, emotional, and energetic, work so they feel empowered to be, do, and have whatever they want in life. If you find this podcast helpful, please take a moment to text five friends you think might benefit and leave us a review. It means so much to share this work that has transformed our lives with others. We appreciate your help so much and can't wait to see you next time.